Hmm. Ray tracing, path tracing, what's all this mean? Aren't they just buzzwords for pretty reflections? So not quite, picture this. So ray tracing is like aiming a flashlight at this glass. It traces the light's path to see where it bounces. It might bounce off the counter, off the window behind me, maybe into your eyes. It's great for real time, but it takes a couple of shortcuts so that it can be really quick with the bounces. Oh, that makes a little more sense. So what about path tracing? So path tracing takes it a lot further. Instead of just one light beam, it calculates every possible path the light can take. So it might go off the walls, through this glass, even through an ice cube that might be in the glass. So it accounts for the physical properties of materials for full on realism. A really cool benefit of that is that you get realistic global illumination. So when I shine this light on the actual glass, you should see the light hit my face in real life. That's what path tracing does. And with ray tracing, the light doesn't actually bounce back off of surfaces onto other surfaces. Mmm, that sounds really intense. Who's even using this? Uh, so you ever seen Toy Story 4? That's path tracing at work. So Pixar used that to get these photorealistic scenes. So the textures, the lighting, everything. Oh wait, so when I turn on path tracing as Cyberpunk, my GPU is trying to act like a Pixar machine? So pretty much, ray tracing is the compromise for games. It looks good, it runs fast, and it does a generally good job. But path tracing, that's Hollywood level perfection. But some games are starting to catch up, like Cyberpunk 27.7's Overdrive mode. Okay, now I get it. So ray tracing is basically a shortcut, and path tracing is like the masterpiece. Exactly. One's a sprint, the other's a marathon.